After spending days searching for an electric motor that was within our budget, we found the perfect one second hand on eBay. The brand was Mars Electric and it was a 5 kilowatt motor. Not super powerful, but good enough for our purposes. We paid about £300 for the motor and the controller together. We'll have a full price breakdown of our conversion at the end of this video. The brand of the controller was Sevcon. The motor also came with some interesting mounting hardware used by the previous owner. We couldn't wait to try the motor out. Alright, so we got our new motor working. It's a very temporary setup as you can see. <laughs> Now we're going to have to get that hooked up on the propeller. This is our speed controller, just sitting here. Jonathan soon got to work hooking up the electronics. More about that later. Then we just had to figure out how to mount the motor. So here I'm making a uh, plate to mount the motor and the bearing to just out of some spare plywood that we had on board. Ideally we would have used metal, but we decided just to use what we had on hand for now and replace it later on if necessary. Jonathan built a platform for our batteries to sit on, which attached to the motor mount. Then it was time to put it all together, starting with the bearing. Next the battery platform went in, and the mount was attached to the bearing. The first pulley was fixed onto the prop shaft, and a belt went around the pulley. Now for the exciting part, installing the motor. Another pulley was attached to the motor, with a belt connecting them to give a 2-1 gear reduction, which is recommended for most sailboats. But one more thing needed to happen before we could test the motor. What are you doing? I'm rewiring the boat. Why are you doing that? We can switch from 12 volt to more volts. <laughs> <laughs> How many more volts? Well, at the moment 24 temporarily, but we will be going to 48. It's fighting with the wiring. Alright, our batteries are under the now seat. These are the batteries that came with the boat, so they're not really in the greatest of condition. We don't have our battery bank yet, so we're just going to use these two batteries to make 24 volts um, as a temporary measure until we get our new batteries in. Nice view of all of our shoes in the background. <laughs> just attaching the power supply to the motor controller. We've just laid out here the controls for the motor. Um, we still need to create a control panel, install it properly. Um, this is the switch for turning it on. Um, this is our throttle. Um, and there's a little display here that will show the speed. So you can see I made a little um, Arduino based circuit um, to control it. We have some very ancient connectors here. <laughs> um, this is what came with the whole setup, so we're trying to reuse things as much as possible. That test of your face is probably not flattering, I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. Shall I turn it on? Yeah. It's not going to do anything yet. This light will blink to say that one of the switches hasn't been activated, which I still need to configure. Whoa, the light flashed! First test. But even after configuring the switch, the motor didn't want to run and Jonathan had to make some adjustments. Now it should run. Do you say so? It doesn't mean that I, it does mean that I have to do a slight wiring change. Shall we see if it does then? Alright, here's my little throttle display. Now it will change colour as I turn the throttle. And hopefully the motor will run. Ready? Yeah. Oh. <gasps> Look, it's going! It is. 
Oh my god! <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> it was! Nicely done. Does this mean we have a walking light in that? It does. Can we turn it up a little bit? Yeah, go for it. Okay. Watch it carefully. Look at that motor go! Prop shaft is spinning. Oh, oh my god, look, look at there? it! Look at the prop shaft spin! It's so quiet as well. <laughs> well, let's not take off anytime soon. <laughs> Tomorrow we're going sailing! <laughs> we weren't quite ready to go sailing, but we decided to test the motor by going forward a bit and then backing in again. We are going! And back in we go! We did manage to get in and out, but there was a problem. We're having some difficulties with the throttle. The motor would turn itself off after a little while, after only a few minutes, so I'm trying to diagnose the problem. I think it might be faulty wiring because we were reusing some old wiring. So what I'm doing here is I've taken the, the throttle and the key switch off and I've just got little clippies, just clipping them onto the controller in the right place to fake the signal basically um, to see if that's what the actual problem is. And here's the basic wiring diagram that I did up for how the throttle, the speed control, here's the throttle and how that connects to the controller itself. So as you can see, we've got it running now, and I've just got a whole bunch of <laughs> wire clips here to to fake the throttle. I can turn it here and a little bit faster. It's not cutting out now like it did before, so um, I think my suspicion was right that the old wiring we were using is faulty. So we're going to replace that with some new wires and then it should all be good. Luckily it was, so we decided to be a little more ambitious and try motoring down the river. To reduce stress, we pulled the boat out by hand. Then we started up the motor and off we went. Because we were a bit nervous about going out by ourselves, we took someone from a neighbouring boat with us to help out. That's not quite that is, and that's with the engine bay open. We were definitely moving, but we weren't getting the speeds we were expecting. Our motor can run at up to 48 volts, and we thought we'd be able to do about 5 knots at that voltage. Since we currently only had 24 volts, we were expecting to do about half that, so 2.5 knots, but we were only doing 1.5. It seemed that the relationship between voltage and speed wasn't linear. We didn't yet have our battery monitor hooked up, and we weren't sure how much power we'd used, so we decided to play it safe and head back to the marina. Once we arrived, we hooked up our battery monitor to investigate, and we could soon see why we weren't getting enough speed. Our motor should have been drawing 100 amps, but instead... So right now we're running on 24 volts, and you can see we're pulling about 17 amps. To see if voltage was really the problem, we hooked up the battery for our outboard motor to make 36 volts. Now at 36 volts we've had this extra battery and we're pulling over 50 amps. Clearly we needed to get our new 48 volt battery bank to realise our motor's full potential. For those interested in a price breakdown, here it is. For the motor and controller, we paid £275 plus £35 postage, so a total of £310. For the belts, bearings and pulleys, we paid £87. This includes buying some spares to have on hand just in case something breaks. For electronic parts, such as connectors, the key switch and wires, we paid a total of £39. Because we made use of a lot of things we had lying around, mounting the motor only cost us £20. And finally, after this video was filmed, we decided to add some stainless steel shaft clamps, which cost £37. So that makes a total of £493. But we did manage to sell our old diesel engine for £250. So technically, 
the entire conversion only cost £243 when that's taken into account. Of course, we do still need to upgrade our battery bank. We're planning a large bank to allow us to go off grid, so we'll probably spend between £700 and £800. This breakdown also doesn't include the cost of our solar setup, since we already had that. We hope you enjoyed this video. If so, please like and subscribe and join us next time when we motor out to the bay and get to sail our boat for the first time ever.